Are the kids gone? Yeah. All right. So anyways, my name is Corey Thompson, uh, Roughneck to Real Estate on all platforms. Um, we put together this slideshow. Uh, what do y'all think about this recession? Is it real? Does it exist? What do y'all think? You look out the window at the beaches, the uh, jet skis are sitting there. They're not in the water. You think they'd normally be in the water on a Wednesday? Or is it a Thursday? What's today? Anybody know? I don't know. I don't know if it's real, I don't know if it's fake, but I can tell you how it's affecting my business, and we ain't getting a showing on a property. I mean, it is dead silent. I literally, I mean, Kitty's right over there. You got one closing today, Kitty? $180,000 single wide, right next to Elon Musk's house, though, over in Bastrop. Y'all know where Bastrop is? It's where Tesla is, if you don't know. So you can sell a $180,000 single wide, but how long did it take to get it sold? 200 days, three months. That deal used to sell in about five minutes with 48 showings and when it got bid up to 250. Now it's a single wide, I know y'all are gonna hate on my shit, but <laughs> it sold for 180,000 and it's not mine, I wholesold it. I'm just telling you, the market is quiet. If you're not in there, if you're wholesaling, you're probably noticing that in the groups, people are posting a lot more deals. And I used to blame it on the daisies, but even the daisies are daisying daisies and more daisies, and then they're going to the MLS and they're daisying MLS stuff they don't even have under contract. It's a fucking shit show out there right now. So, that being said, I don't know what the market holds. The only thing I can tell you is our $30,000 mobile homes are renting for $1,500 a month. And we get multiple applications, and that market's going to be there. If it goes down to $900 a month, I still don't care. That market's still going to be there. I think the Airbnb market's going to be there. I don't know about the hotels. You know, you can't cook a meal in a hotel. If I'm in a family and I want to go somewhere, I need to be able to cook and save money. I don't know if the recession is real, but I do know that the people with money, okay, are trying to time the market. And what that looks like is they're sitting on the sideline with their money hoping they can place a big bet down the road and double their money real quick. And when that happens, it just kind of goes through the whole fucking system. And all of a sudden, you've got people that would normally buy that think they're going to get a better deal down the road and they're just going to sit. And we're in that lull right now. And it happened during COVID. Who, who was in real estate during COVID? Do you remember at the beginning? It was, it, was, it was fucking great. Like, they shut down the economy, said, everybody go indoors, lock your doors. The COVID's going to break in and get you. And everybody said, all right, I'm in. I'm inside, okay? And all of the part-time real estate people said, you know what? I needed some time off. And they went silent. They went and started bragging about playing golf and whatever else they were doing. And they missed the biggest opportunity in real estate in the whole world with all the appreciation that the trillions of dollars of inflation created, okay? We bought stuff then that doubled in value before we could get it sold. It was crazy. So, in 2021, we had our best year. I think, I'm not sure, I think we made somewhere around $700,000. And I know y'all gonna be like, well, that's not a lot of money. All these other people are making seven figures. I get it. Last year, I put my tax return on the screen. I've never seen nobody do that. I put my P&L up. I put my bank accounts up. I said, hey, look, here it is. There it is. You can look at it. You can scrutinize it. You can hate on it. You can do whatever you want. But that was our best year. We've been in real estate seven years now. 700000 was our best year last year, and that's a fucking load. I'm telling you right now, that is a load. To walk out with $700,000 after expenses is fucking hard. Anybody that's telling you otherwise has something to sell you. So, in the first quarter, in the first quarter of 2022, in the first quarter of 2022, we beat our best year in the first quarter of 2022. We beat that. Yeah, wow, yeah, well, okay. In the last quarter of 2022, or in the next month, we'll, we'll pick up $475,000 in assignment fees. 
We're not wholesalers. We're not wholesalers. Are y'all wholesalers? Who's wholesaler? Who's a flipper? Y'all warming up y'all's resume? <laughs> Who's a landlord? Okay, now I'm going to give you an idea. It's just an idea on what to do if you're worried about the law. Because banks are still loaning money. We have deals closing right now. Banks are still loaning money. And this is fractional reserve banking at its best. Banks have money that the, the, the government printed, and it's sitting idle, and interest rates are going up. What does that mean if you're a bank, and you got money sitting in the bank, and interest rates are going up? Yeah, you're having to pay more money for the money that's sitting idle. And so as interest rates go up, they're like, shit, we got to get this out. We got to get this loan to somebody. Are you going to loan money on a car during a recession if you're a bank? Maybe, because you can charge 18% interest. But can you find a car as easy as you can find a house? When homie quits paying, where's the car? They got to chase it around. They get it back. It's worth less than it was. So what do you think they prefer loaning on? Houses, real estate, multifamily. They would rather loan on anything like this, this very building we're in right now, then they loan on anything else. So banks are still lending. This is where the 2008, 2009 thing's a little different. Banks stopped lending back then. Banks are lending now, okay? If you're looking for equity and trying to time the market, understand something. Interest rates go down. Rents rarely do. It takes a big calamity to make rents dive off, and it's going to be depending on your market, right? So during the law, I would say if you have the ability, if you have credit, if you know somebody that has credit, you might consider being a landlord. So we'll go to the next slide, Braxton. I know everybody that came before me told you not to work at all. I'm not going to tell you that. This is me and my daughter. In the background right there is a winery in, outside of San Francisco, California. We drove out there to knock on this guy's door to try to buy 300 units last month. When was it? It was about a month ago. And then we're going to FedEx this picture to him overnight until he decides he wants to sell us or hire us to do his property management. We're just going to FedEx him different marketing with my sweet kids on here. This is our kids uh, the other day on Saturday. We're moving a piece of equipment from one job site to another. On Saturday, I always have my son on the weekends. He's two. Who has, who has boys? They're fucking hard. That girl is easy. That boy, he is crazy. He's an insane person. So I just tie him down in the car seat, and we just drive around. And then when we get there, we just get on the tractor and make him get earn his keep. He got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that day and a, and a tractor ride. Look at him. He's having a good day. And that's in front of a mobile home right outside of Bastrop that we bought before the market turned. So what do you think this one's going to be? It ain't going to sell, I can tell you that. It's a shithole but it will rent or owner finance. So let's go to the next slide. This right here is one of our very first deals in 2015. It was when we were house flippers. We were bougie, we were cool, we were flipping houses. Look at what we paid for this thing. Y'all, can y'all read a HUD? Anybody ever seen one? Down here at the bottom it says, gross amount due from buyer, $5,414. That's a 2015 buy by a rank amateur rookie found on Craigslist, okay? No marketing budget, no nothing. We bought that for $5,400. Check this out. Go to the next, hold on, hold on. First, look, address. Here's the address on a HUD. Those that hadn't seen one, there it is. Take note of it. Go to the next slide. Little different, same address. These are the receipts, guys. What does that say? $69,000 cash to borrower. What's the date? August 31st, 2021. That property would not sell for $60,000 when we got done with it. So we rented it. We didn't have a choice. What else are we going to do? We're new flippers. We didn't want to be landlords. Flippers made all the money, so we put a tenant in there. That tenant now pays $1,500 a month. At that time, they were paying $800 a month. Same tenant. Nothing's changed. But what about this? What's that? Where'd that come from? 
came from the bank. They gave us $69,000 over the previous mortgage, was what, which, was, which was what we had in it. I'm sorry, can't talk. What, who's a CPA? Anybody a CPA? What do you owe on taxes for the 69 you borrow out? Oh, okay. That's good. Let's go to the next slide. Fuck. They're all over the place. All right. What does this say? It's two HUDs, I think, side by side. Is it, or is it one HUD? Who knows? I don't know. I didn't look at this before we did it. It's one HUD. If you look down at the bottom, cash from borrower, $25,000, or, or total paid for by cash from borrower is $25,000. Two borrower, $3,000. We got $3,000 at closing when we bought this. Total debt on the property, 25 grand. Go to the next slide. This one right here, cash to borrower, uh, $1,113. Um, $30,000 worth of debt on the property. Who can add? Anybody got a calculator? What's 30 plus 25? Go to the next slide. This is the refi right here. This is the refi of both of them? Oh, you only put one HUD on. Oh, those were side-by-side -side HUDs. My bad. See how bad I am at this? So, so the HUD before was two mobile homes. We just borrowed, uh, took a bank loan on them for every dime we had in them. Those two mobile homes are rented for $2,700 a month. $2,700 a month. The bank said, we will not give you any money. There's a recession, guys. This is Joe Biden's America. I said, all right. Just put it on a 10-year AM then. To hell with it. What does it matter? I got two mobile homes. We owe, this is the refi? Are you sure this is the refi? This don't look like the refi, my guy. Because there's $60,000 worth of debt on the two properties. This is the second buy. There was a third HUD that was left off here, but we just refied and it's two for 60000 They wouldn't give us no money back. Anybody that's got an AM calculator, how high can the interest get on that 10-year note when you're collecting $2,700 a month in rent? and you only got $60,000 worth in debt, how high can interest rates get? 48%, what is it? It can go wherever the fuck it wants to go. Everybody's like, I'm worried about interest. I'm like, I'm not worried about interest. I'm worried about equity. Interest will not matter, okay? I, if I have equity, interest will not bother me. Interest will go down. I will refinance once interest goes down. During the lull, if I can get a discount, I'm gonna get a discount. If I can make somebody else pay that for that, property for me by renting it out, then I will do that. And then when the market rebounds, guess what? It'll be COVID all over again, except it'll be way on fire. And somebody would pay down that equity for you while you wait. That's the power of being a landlord. That's what wealthy is. That's what all this generational wealth shit's about. That's what everybody keeps talking about, but I don't see them showing it. Here it is. This is how you get wealthy in real estate, by owning it, not transacting it. You can get like a shitload of money transacting real estate, but you will never get wealthy doing it. Go to the next one. What is this? Where's, where's Coleman? Ah, oh, fuck Coleman. Coleman, anyways, this is Church Street. We haven't refinanced this one yet. But this is the buy side HUD, and we can't see it down here, but there's $839,000 worth of debt on there. Um, there was some money held back in escrow, $135,000. So we bought it for 680, borrowed eight whatever, and they held back $135,000. This is a private, this is one individual, guys. This is one human being. He said, he did a loan on some of our shitty mobile homes, said, hey, if you got a bigger deal, call me. All right, we'll call you. $680,000 during COVID, 10 vacancies. Guy was worried he couldn't evict nobody. Wanted to give it away for cost basis. So we said, we'll buy it. Called this guy, said, hey, you said you want to do a bigger deal, right? He's like, yeah. He's like, what you got? I'm like, I need a million. I need a meal. He said, well, how's this work? I said, well, this is how it works. See, I'll do it. There it is. He did the 839 at closing, put 135 in reserves, and then he loaned us, I think, another 100,000 after that. Go to the next HUD or next thing. This is the appraisal. What's the date on it? What is it? Somebody tell me. What's it say it's worth? This is Joe Biden's America. That's a recession number. 
This is a recession. It's recession value. You can go to my YouTube right now and scroll back far enough. You'll say, it'll say $1.8 million in apartment purchases. And you know why we didn't make 1.8? Anybody know? Because DJ's fucking gas. Where's he at? His fuel. DJ was putting his fuel on that property. And we had fuel expenses on the damn P&L. I was like, who the fuck puts fuel on an apartment P&L? That was $6,000 worth of fuel. Guys, I want you to take $6,000 right now. $6,000. Pull out your calculator. Type it in. $6,000 divided by .055. And tell me what you get. $109,000. Fucking DJ. Cost us 100 grand just billing fuel to the property. And that comes into bookkeeping. That's a bookkeeping error like I've never seen before. But if anybody can do it, it's DJ. So, anyways, I, I was like, what is traveling expenses doing on a damn apartment complex? Well, let's look. Oh, it's fuel. For what? Bro got paid to drive over there. He got $15 an hour for driving, then build fuel on it. Oh, I was mad as hell. Anyways, so go to the next one. This is a HUD. This is, when, what's the settlement date? November 7th, 2018. Uh, my daughter was about to turn five years old. She's a little four-year-old. Next day, she turned five. We close on this piece of shit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I got gray hair, if I got any left. But this is the reason why. Now, on this, it's not broke out properly because we closed on one big deal. This was some daisy chain wholesaler out of Arizona. Brought us a 32-unit apartment complex. And we're like, yeah, we want that. And he's like, well, if you want that, you got to buy these fucking houses. Those houses. Who, where, somebody in here owns one of them now. It's fucking amazing how that worked out. But we got 30 houses in a 32-unit apartment complex for whatever this number down here is. Um, so we got 52,000 back at closing, so it was $479,000. Now a lot of y'all are like, that sounds like a really good deal. And I was the same way until them houses came along. And I can tell you, COVID did a lot of things for a lot of people, but it got me out of those houses. Those, you couldn't give those houses away and COVID hit and we put them on the market for like 15,000 a piece and we ended up making money selling the houses. I was like, this is crazy. but. We still owned a lot of those houses because we couldn't sell them. We couldn't give them away. We couldn't talk a crackhead into fucking moving in. There was nothing we could do with those houses. But these apartments, on the other hand, and, and this is what I do. We buy in small towns. We buy small apartment complexes in small towns. It's a county seat in Texas because you can't build that, that product. The replacement cost is too high. It's not economical to go in there and do it. So if you can ever buy one, you're going to get it at cost basis one because it's going to be a farmer that owns it and he doesn't want to pay taxes. So he's going to call the CPA and say, hey, how much can I sell this for not pay the IRS? He's going to shoot out a number and they're going to sell it for that. And this guy, this particular farmer's name is Ralph Lee, sold us another property, but he sold this to the guy that bought it for $125,000, the same apartments that we bought for two thirty. I know I talk fast there, but there's a lot of shit going on. $230,000 cost basis. Go to the next slide. This is the appraisal and I guess the refinance HUD. Where's it at? What's that say? One point what? 1.8 what? There's some more numbers. That's 1.9. DJ probably put some gas on there too we didn't catch. <laughs> $1.9 million for those 32 units. What do we pay for them? $230,000. Now, they whooped my ass. My daughter was uh, five, turn, about to turn five when we bought those. And they kicked my ass for three years. And there were people out there on the internet just going, you're out over your skis, old son. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, yeah, when the tide goes back, we're going to see your wiener. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? Look at this. 1.8, we got it done. We got it done. Now look at this. This is the most amazing part of it. What is this number down here? I know the people in the front row, what does that number say? Huh? 326, where did that come from? Oh yeah, we borrowed it against it. It came right out of the property. 
when COVID shut the world down, all my friends got laid off and needed jobs. So I was like, hey, can y'all remodel apartments? They said, I don't know. I said, neither do I. Let's go do it. She was talking about Snowmageddon. We were out there on those apartments during Snowmageddon. The pipes busting. It's raining everywhere. We're like, Jesus Christ. We end up in the next town. There's like a recovering stripper in an apartment with her kids, and it's raining cold water on her. Real story. You can watch it on my YouTube. And we're out there doing that, physically doing it. I'm there doing the work like, like they told you not to do. They just told you don't do that. They said not to do it. What does this say? What does that say? What is it? Who put, who put, what's the tax on that? Huh? Oh, that's right, nothing. What? Oh, yeah, but we're over leveraged now. They're going to see our wiener again during this next crash. Guess what? Rent's going up. The rent's going up. Vacancies, they won't move out. They can't find another place to live. They can't go buy a house because of higher interest rates. Do I feel secure in this? I mean, it seems pretty simple to me. Even though everybody told you to stay at home, work two hours a day, hire out everything, I will tell you to do the opposite. If you're broke, if you're getting started, you do whatever the fuck it takes. You go drive, knock on doors, do whatever it takes to get a life-changing deal, 100 grand, 200 grand, and then take that money. You've been living on 30 your whole life. Keep living on 30. Take that money and go shove it into something that will pay you money every month. So eventually you don't have to worry about what Joe Biden's doing to the economy or what's happening with student loan debt or whatever the hell's going on. You just worry about fixing air conditioners, and it was a hot year in Texas. We bought $150,000 worth of air conditioners this year. It's been terrible, okay? But I would much rather do that than have to sit here and go, is my flip going to sell? Lord, I hope my flip sells. i got to write another $1,000 check to the lender again this month, and I don't know if it's going to sell. When it does that to me, I'm just like, you know what? Put a for rent sign in the yard. See if it'll rent for $1,800 a month. No interest? Go to $1,500 a month. Go down until somebody moves in. We'll sell that when the economy's better. So what's the next one? We don't got a next one, do we? We're out of slides. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll open it up for Q&A. Sorry. Y'all good? Did, I was, oh, my bad. I forgot. It could have been worse. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? No? Nobody's afraid now. Well... I appreciate y'all's time. My name is Corey Thompson, Roughneck Real Estate on Everything. I'll see y'all.